it just got way more expensive to play Magic the Gathering, specifically MTGO. Magic Online is where we access formats like Modern, Legacy, and Vintage, and one of the primary ways we do that is through a rental service. Because of the trading system and the way the economy works on this platform, it's very different than Magic Arena, and for many of you who know, you use stuff like Mana Traders or Card Hoarder to rent your cards for a small monthly fee. Now, the whole conversation around how everything's a subscription for service these days is a whole other thing. I think a lot of people have a baseline frustration with services like this to even access your magic cards, but it's a cheap alternative and it's one that's way more affordable than maybe outright buying a deck again or just with an additional cost on top of it, especially with the prices of certain modern staples coming out of Modern Horizons that can rival or even be more expensive than their paper counterparts due to economy. I think that Mana Traders provides a very good alternative for the average user, but this latest news of how they've increased their prices and decreased their rental limits, especially for their loyalty users, it is one that's very frustrating and full transparency. I am now officially part of the Magic Online Creator Program. I have been for about a month or two months at this point, so I haven't been using Mana Traders. My account is on long vacation, but you'll see that I've been with them for a very long time time. And as someone who may actually one day return to it, if the creator program ends, then I have a vested interest in this as well. And this is one that I'm definitely going to be closely following. If you have further news down below that maybe I haven't touched on or further thoughts, I'd love to hear them because again, this is a nuanced issue. There's a lot of angles to take this from because Mana Traders is providing a great service, but Honestly, this isn't a great PR move. I think there's a lot of different ways that they could have handled this. So there's going to be a lot of different angles and opinions. And again, I want to hear them down below. Now, if you want to see more videos like this talking on topics like this in Magic, then leave a like on the video. Let me know that you want to see it and subscribe for more of your favorite Magic the Gathering drama channels news. I, that's not me. OK, so don't. That's a joke, by the way. Ryan Donkin is the one that started things off for me, or at least this is the first tweet that I saw. And it says, my brain is absolutely melted at the decision from Mana Traders to nuke rental limits and half all past and future loyalty bonuses. It's mind blowing to me that the company has decided that my three plus years of loyalty means so much less. And so I, wanna, I wasn't able to confirm these numbers and Ryan actually touches on this down below. It's actually really hard to find the before loyalty rates and the current loyalty rates uh, and kind of compare the two. I feel like as a PR move, they've made this specifically very difficult to find, but there is potential that if you ask their support team or I, I tried using like the Wayback Machine, but their front website doesn't really list it. So again, if there is a way down below, let me know how you found their previous loyalty rates as an update. I'd love to kind of tweet it out as an update to this story, um, but kind of talks about down here. Rest assured, these changes are minimal. Uh, if we kind of back up there, uh, these changes are much more punishing the longer you've been loyal to Mana Traders. My monthly cost has increased by 20%. My rental limit has reduced by 22%. These are not minimal changes. And I'm honestly, I, I tend to agree to that. If, if that's actually true, uh, which I believe it is based on the comments from other folks who have seen this and, and potentially have compared this, this is a very frustrating scenario. And I think that, again, it's really unfortunate because these guys are the only ones that are doing it right card hoarder and mana traders are the primary rental services card hoarder is a bit more limiting in terms of who they accept into their program but mana traders is open anyone you sign on can hop in and i think we've noticed over the years for those of you that have been consuming content from mana traders there have actually been a couple of folks a couple of content creators out there that may not be considered as big that have been dropped from the mana traders program and that's kind of that first crack in the in the noggin there where a lot of folks are being dropped off because, you know, those creators aren't providing as much of a benefit to the program hopping in, right? So you aren't getting that many new users from them, but we obviously still do. But those bonuses haven't been increasing. They've probably been decreasing. I'm thinking especially of um, some of our favorite Magic the Gathering podcasts that are uh, kind of helped by a program like this with their loyalty bonuses. Um, it's really not a good look when it comes to that. So let's hop right into the website itself. When I log in, this is the message I get kind of right off the bat here. And 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 it's really just a message here. So, you know, if I zoom in on this with the increasing number of set releases each year, along with the additional commander sets that come out with each regular set, we need to make some changes at Mana Traders. Instead of raising prices, we have decided to adjust our loyalty program. These changes have already been in effect for new users over the past few months, and we are extending them to older users as well. 
Currently, each month grants you an increase in your ticket limit and a percentage decrease in your payment. We are adjusting these figures under the new loyalty program, which might mean you will see a slight increase in payment. We didn't make these changes lightly, but they are necessary to continue serving you at the highest level. These adjustments will help us address stock and ticket limit issues in the future. Rest assured, these changes are minimal. We have also added buys to the loyalty program based on your months of loyalty. You can earn up to four buys per year to use in your Manitrader series tournaments. This is a great advantage, especially since we expect our tournaments to be 10 rounds long now that we are opening them up. Uh, a buy can only be used for a round one of any tournament. When you register your deck, you can check a box if you want to use your buy. However, you will still recommend using uh, being ready at your PC at the start of the tournament so you don't miss it. So a couple of things here. So again, addressing the fact that they are increasing our uh, kind of prices, adjusting but that probably means that they're decreasing it because they're kind of uh, accounting for all the additional sets and uh you know coming with the regular sets like the increase in volume of cards and having to purchase these right because uh, at the end of the day they're not getting these for free off of wizards of the coast mana traders is not an affiliated program with wizards of the coast there's something there are a company and a and a service that works alongside it, it works within the rules of what magic online is operating under and that means that at the end of the day they have to purchase these sets and so that has become an increase in cost which is perfectly understandable as an average user myself as a creator there is a lot of fatigue uh fatigue for these sets i can't even imagine Imagine what it is for the average user trying to catch up and stay up to date. And a lot of people will say, you know, it's not for you. It's not for you. Well, mana traders can't get away from that. It just at a base level, they have to purchase every set because its users are very varied. They now have standard packages. They have commander packages. They have their regular premium, whatever packages. And so everyone is a different user. They're going to require them for different needs, especially now with, you know, kind of competitive commander on the platform. There's a lot more visibility on the platform for different formats. And so people are going to want different types of cards on the platform and with universes beyond sets such as the fallout sets and the Warhammer sets being unavailable at this point, the increasing prices of these cards are just not going to be addressed anytime soon. And they're going to create a bit of a, a vacuum of problems on the Magic Online platform if these cards become really playable even further in the Eternal formats, especially creating the disparity one to one between paper and online versus accessibility. It's going to be a bit of a problem when it comes to that. And so I, I see the big shout out here to the added bonus to the loyalty program here where you get the four buys in the mana trader series tournaments and i mean as they mentioned they are opening up the tournaments now so you know the anyone can kind of hop in and and register to these so they're expecting their tournaments to be 10 rounds which by the way that's insane i i, I don't know like I, as a consumer myself I, I i don't know like i yo i'm i'm like i'm, I'm turning 29 next year I'm, I'm 28 right now like like this is the, the, I, I don't have time for this like 10 round tournaments and i will say mana traders is the most accessible way to do these tournaments i think they have a very modern model where you have a time frame and you just play your rounds then and go to kind of a, a final cut and take it from there i think they they do it in a very appropriate way i think it's very smart and it's very similar to the arena format um as to how they do their tournaments so this is the most accessible way to do tournaments and i think they hold it well but why are we holding 10 round tournaments who has the time for this who has the time for this? And and look, I know some of you in the comment section down below, you may have more or less responsibilities than I do. From my personal experience, 10 round tournaments, is, we, we need to evolve uh, the way we do magic tournaments. OK, I just I don't know. Th this isn't exactly accessible, but I get it. Some people can do it. Personal complaint there. But kind of hopping into uh, kind of that section I was talking about. This is my own mana traders account right here. This is what it looks like uh, kind of hopping into it. As you can see, this is the screen that pops up this blue window right here. And uh, kind of the Mana Trader series and everything. If we keep going here, we can see that I am actually on my 42nd month of loyalty uh, right now. So I'm actually I've been with them for a very, 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 very long time. Right. I've gotten all these loyalty bonuses. I, I'm a you know, I'm very close to getting my 48th, 60th month uh, just gives me a tick increase. And, and that's really about it. Right. Like I've, I've kind of been here for the long haul. Right. Like pretty much like three years. Right. Just like uh, just like that previous user was talking about, like almost three years I've been with this platform, actually not even almost. I have been with, with this platform for three years, uh, almost four years, I should say. Uh, yeah, I, I can't even do the math off the top of my head. But as you can tell, just confirming, I am on my long vacation. Right. So since June 11th, I put myself on long vacation, especially being a part of the creator program, then providing me resources to kind of create the content for you. A lot of the leagues that we play, you'll notice that I am playing on my 
creator account. And that is because of that. And so I've been privileged enough to be in this situation. But again, if that creator program ends, if I get booted out or, you know, kind of the, the requirements change, then I could see myself coming back to mana traders. And that is going to be an increased cost for me. I got a lot of bills to pay, and this is going to be something to consider as uh, maybe just in a, a more increased like, you know, TV subscription or something like that. That's the way I'm going to think about it. And it's going to be one that unfortunately I'm going to have to eat bite the bullet on because, again, I am privileged to be a content creator. But from an average user, this is a very frustrating thing to see, especially with a lot of my viewers being modern players. A lot of times like renting these decks can be on the margins like if you're playing decks that include modern horizons 2 cards specifically the elementals and everything your decks can be on the margins of like 10 20 30 tickets and you need that limit to just be able to rent these cards and make this work like a lot of times if you're playing these those upper end decks like four color omnath and stuff you can't even rent those decks with the highest subscription service here um or barely and you're just gonna have to purchase some amount of cards and then next week or you you want to rent like a 500 tick deck versus now you want to rent like in a 900 tick deck right it, it kind of fluctuates in between your own personal needs your own content needs whatever it might be and it's really frustrating to have this variance and not have a service like this perfectly work the way you want it to especially now that being a loyalty member right like that feels like the most frustrating thing like without letting anyone know of any advance that we are making these changes in a couple of months so that people can be aware of this i think that would have gone on much better if they they probably knew about this logistical problem especially earlier in the year i feel like they could have announced this earlier on and this would have gone on a lot easier maybe they would have you know lost more users in that case but again at the end of the day where are they supposed to go card hoarder doesn't accept their users users as much they have a very limited program to try and stimmy the blow of something like this mana traders primary model is this whereas card hoarder uh they have a rental service after being a purchasing platform right mana Trader, traders is not a purchasing platform like goat bots and card hoarder where you can go online and purchase your magic the gathering singles on magic online on those platforms they make their money and their revenue through there and uh, kind of support and whatnot and now the uh, rental program is something separate that they have so again what's your alternative are you just going to start purchasing cards are you going to get off magic online are you going to not play the formats you love and i guess a lot of people won't and that can be very frustrating that's very unfortunate but for those of you that want to play I mean, like, I don't know, three rounds at the LGS every week. Is that good enough for you? It's not for me. I enjoy, I really enjoy playing Magic. I, I want to play in different ways. I don't want to just go to the local game store and just play actively. I enjoy the gathering, but it can be very difficult for me to travel out. And for a lot of people that might be in the middle of nowhere. So having this online platform accessible is going to be a, the, one of the primary ways to do it. Not everyone has a great webcam setup to use for spell table and everything. I fortunately do. So I get to play some commander games there. But again, just highlighting all the varied issues of making the decision to leave the platform. What's your alternative? You know, let me know in the comment section down below you as an average user, as a viewer, what would your alternative be? Because I'm not seeing one. I, I'm not sure if leaving the platform is actually a good idea because a you lose your loyalty bonuses. I think it's better to put it on long vacation. You pay a way reduced fee and then you can see how things turn up at the uh, after some time, because I think just canceling it is just this brazen move that doesn't really serve anyone. The, uh, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you see it, Card Hoarder has kind of cornered the market, right? They are one of the only companies doing this card order does this again in a limited fashion those are the only two rental services and with wizards of the coast only doing it as a test run we've seen with previous sets previous tournament series and limited time frames that they for a purchase price give you a rental service where you have access to all the cards in magic the gathering and then you could use for tournaments or use for five o's but you know I, I believe like certain tournaments you aren't allowed to but certain like leagues and stuff you are able to and so they give you limited access to test what the popularity of something like that is and i think it would be highly popular if they had a competitive price it's directly on the platform i think that would be a lot more accessible to a lot of users but i think it also presents like a long-term economy problem for wizards of the coast if they do something like that because this is a way to manage the economy outside of wizards of the coast coast this is a third party factor whereas a lot of people you know for them like magic online is a very inaccessible platform in terms of how it's trading works how you access cards it's like it's not like magic arena where you got wild cards and everything it's very easy onboarding on that platform especially for users coming from other digital tcgs it's very intuitive as to the gem system the coin system how you purchase cards wild cards and all this stuff it makes sense whereas magic online is just kind of uh, like for a new user just hopping in you know you are a couple months fresh into magic the gathering it's like heading into a stock app like what do you even purchase what do you mean trade cards what do you mean uh like rental limit who's goat bots you know what i mean like all these questions come up and 
I, I, I don't know. There, there's like a whole long winded list of issues here. And I will say Mana Traders did address this. I'm really happy about this because they do shine some light on the uh, on the kind of <clears throat> deeper situation here so regarding our most recent changes um we have a unified we have unified our loyalty program for all users under the current system i would like to assure you that we thoroughly considered all possibilities but we have sadly determined that this is necessary in order to be able to continue to provide everyone with the highest level of service while these changes may be unpopular they are necessary for mana traders to continue serving you by implementing these adjustments, we can remove the limit of ticket sales and greatly improve releases of new sets. In the past five months, we have seen the release of Murders of Karlov Manor, Universes Beyond MTG Fallout, Warhammer 40k, Outlaws of Thunder Junction, Modern Horizons 3, MTG Assassin's Creed, and three Commander sets. And, and honestly, comment down below, like if you're this far in the video, just comment fatigue. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I'm fatigued just reading that. I can't even like mentally comprehend that like all of those sets actually came out in the last five months that's insane that's crazy and like i like okay this might be sound a bit shilly i am in no way like i don't have any support from mana traders i've applied to their program i was not accepted whatever like i feel for them this this as a business is frustrating this is crazy because this translates directly as a user imagine trying to keep up with all of this i actually have the resources and time to sit in front of my computer because of you know my job and like where i'm at in life and everything like i have the ability to sit down and keep up with this so many people don't this is insane like forget being as a business as a user this is insane um there uh, and, and when we first started in 2018 there were only a few sets per year and no commander sets. Yeah, the massively increased frequency of set release made the previous loyalty program unsustainable. Despite this reduction, users still pay significantly less than they would elsewhere. Since 2018, we have also added numerous features to enhance our product, such as smart art cards, instant delivery, and our monthly tournament series. As our longtime customers know, we have never adjusted the loyalty like that. In fact, we've adjusted the price down at one point in the past actually reduced but sadly the reality is that we had to do this at this point in time in order to compensate for significantly higher operational costs to stay afloat although this ticket price has been adjusted it remains the best value in the market for subscribers and we will continue to be so with these changes we'll be removing daily limits in the upcoming weeks we will not make further changes to the loyalty program unless they benefit you previously our limit increased up to 48 months but now we will extend to um, month 60. this update will help many users who have experienced reduced limits you may look forward to the changes in the coming days now i will say a they're correct they're isn't a comparable service out there that provides a rental service that provides a tournament series and like so many things that they provide i think just the the logistics of this are are what's frustrating like why did you put this on loyalty users such last minute you could have let us know a couple months in advance and i think that would have gone over a lot sooner and if you posted something like this i think a lot more people would have understood just the fact that we were part of your loyalty program for so many months is again especially as someone who's been with you for almost four years it's 2024 i started using you two years after you kind of uh kind of went live here like i i, I am almost with you for four years and I, I feel that frustration too because i felt like i thought my loyalty meant something but i like i understand that you had to make the change i just think you could have done it in a much better way you could have let us know months in advance because these are operational costs that you would have been aware of for a long time right now you, you would have right you would have done the uh the accounting calculations you would have done the internal logistics you would have had meetings about this and and looked at your operational costs and you would have been able to print these numbers as a uh, i'm assuming as a well-running business you would have done this so i think this would have gone over much better if you just let people know in advance if this wasn't just popped on you all of a sudden you logged in your mana traders and that blue screen popped up and all of a sudden you're losing value on your dollar and heck not even on your dollar on your increased dollar you're now paying more for less and i think i guess they're trying to make up for it by in extending it to month 60 where you now have you know that final month if you've been for a very long time you get a further reduction or sorry increase in your ticket limit but again opening up the turn in the series getting the buys i guess those are positive things but for a lot of users they're just going to see that you know your loyalty means nothing the loyalty program like ultimately means nothing yes you know what i will say there is still a decrease in cost overall for those of you that are hopping onto the platform for the very first time you as a loyalty program user are paying less than those people fair enough it just really sucks that you know this had to be popped on those loads of users a lot uh, a lot later and the last thing i want to touch on right now i mean like you know the rental service is being difficult 
Um, it's really sad the way that like it was handled and card hoarders just isn't taking new users right now based on the suite. So prospective new loan account applicants, please note that at this time, we are not processing new loan program applications, including free loan account upgrade requests. While this is temporary, we currently do not have an ETA for resuming new applications and upgrades. We apologize for the inconvenience, especially for a lot of people hopping off of mana traders. They might think that card hoarder has that alternative. Unfortunately, it's an application based system. It's not just you hop, on, hop in and you pay and you get in. Card Horror doesn't need that. They have a lot of other ways to gain that type of revenue. So that's really frustrating that even the alternatives isn't something that we have available um, to the average user. But again, I've kind of ranted on. I've kind of talked about this for, you know, ad nauseum at this point, pun intended. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Are you a Mana Traders user? Are you frustrated by this system? Have you been, you know, kind of overall even further confused by the onboarding process that is Magic Online? And have you now just said, you know what, I'm not playing Magic Online anymore? I mean, you'll definitely be getting Magic Online content from me. Again, fully acknowledging the, the, the privilege that I have to be on the content creator program, getting those free resources and have the time to bring you this content. I have the resource to continue to do so, but do you feel like this is kind of the nail in the coffin for you to no longer play Magic Online due to increasing costs?